my first impression of bees were really intelligent. Bees, um, I don't think they're the, uh, the friendliest of things. They're, they're great for making honey and everything. I like bees. They have purpose. They have work for the honey and what they do. It's a scientific mystery and a catastrophe for American farmers. Millions of bees are dying in hives across the United States. All the factors that people are talking about, whether it be pesticides or pathogens or certain animals like mites and tracheomites and things like that, they're affecting everything. It's just how you, it's just what you deal with when you deal with bees these days. There is, it's happening all over the planet and it's gonna affect beekeeping as a whole. The bees will produce new queens and get rid of that queen. Well, the commercial beekeepers, to make sure that they have viable queens, requeen their hives usually twice a year. So they're performing that supersedure for the bees. So there's no longer any environmental pressure for them to do that. And in the same way that we can select and breed for specific traits, we can select and breed out specific traits. So there's this idea going around now that, that by continually superseding, the queens for the bees, that the bees are no longer superseding on their own. So then when the colony gets into a problem, they don't produce a supersedure queen or an emergency queen, and then all of a sudden you have a queen that's not a very good or viable queen anymore. And you know, without the, the worker bees being continually replaced, the population collapses pretty rapidly. Colony collapses as far as a, uh, a worldwide phenomenon. I mean, we've lost third of the bees in the world over the last about 15 years. Just kind of this perfect storm that's going on that's causing bees to collapse, or at least that's, that's what the current, <laughs> the current idea is. The truth is, is that after all the, all the research that we've done, the Colony Collapse Disorder Working Group and the USDA and the EPA and all these other groups that have gone around and done all these testings, the collective idea right now is that we just don't know what's killing them. And it's really easy for what was recently referred to as an armchair atheist, which is just somebody that decides, they read it on the internet, and they decide that it's Monsanto or that it's Bayer or all these other groups. It's really easy to villainize certain things and just say that this is the factor. And the truth of the matter is, is that we've tried to do that. We've, headlines have said, we've figured it out, we've figured it out, we've figured it out. And each time it's just it hasn't been the case, and bees are still dying, and we just don't know exactly what it is. So it's, it can be a little scary when you think about it. Is it colony collapse disorder? Um, is it the mosquito spray person that comes in, kills a lot of the field bees, stresses the colony out, not enough to kill them, but then these viruses that are dormant in the honeybees become expressed when the bees are under stress and duress. Um, and then the virus really decimates the hive. Then these beetles come in that were introduced around here in the late 90s, and your hive is dead. You know, and this can all happen you know, within 10 days. It's now estimated that nearly 30% of the honeybee population dies every year. Many now see the threat to honeybees as bigger and more ominous than just CCD. If the bees disappeared, Einstein said, then man would only have four years of life left. No more bees, no more pollination, no more plants, no more animals, no more man. In the low country down here and Savannah and certain other cities along the area, mosquitoes living on the marsh, it's a serious problem. And for a long time they used, you know, all kinds of pesticides and they used to be actually mosquito trucks that would just drive through residential areas growing up here and just leave this huge fog behind. So during the summer, there's a yellow helicopter that flies over and spreads an aerosol uh, mosquito repellent. Inevitably, we go out and there's this, what is collectively called the puddle of death, which is unfortunate, but it's all the bees that were outside when the helicopter flew over are just killed. Most of the beekeepers that see very large losses are um, the commercial beekeepers that are running large pollination operations. And, you know, they're loading hundreds of colonies of bees on semis and trucking them all over the country and then dropping them on monoculture. And, you know, if you can it, imagine how you would feel if your mom locked you in your room for three weeks and only fed you broccoli. 
and that's pretty much what they're doing to their bees. So it's not a big surprise that they need large numbers. So during the winter, once they stop spraying these things, these bees will hole up in their hives and they'll use the nectar that they turn into honey and the pollen uh, for food to help them survive the winter. I mean, that's why bees make honey in the first place. It's like canned food for them. It doesn't go bad and then they can use it to survive the winter when the plants go away. But you're seeing these bees that are then feeding uh, baby bees this nectar and this pollen over time and come the spring, their immune systems are so far depleted at this point that it makes them stressed out enough to where uh, pathogens from all over the place, all over the world, but it's, that have all been collected into the U.S. over the last, you know, 40, 50 years or so, these bees that are dying have sometimes up to 14 different diseases all at once. And so when you, we've tested bees that have died from CCD over the last 10 years or so, the last, last thing that I read said that there was over 46 different diseases in some of these hives. And, uh, and one hive in particular had 17 different diseases in the bees. And these, a lot of these diseases, like such immunity to like tracheal mites and stuff like that, are things that in a normal setting, these bees have built up immunities to over the years, but because of other reasons, their immunity's gone down and then they just get infected. It's like almost having like an autoimmune disease. Because there are real threats out there, sort of like never taking your child to the doctor, having them get a checkup, you know, something's gonna happen. So, um, and that's what happens to, to honeybees. Um, we lost, probably half our bees last year, maybe 60%. Basically, if you can do things that are good for the, you know, the ecology and your environment, it's gonna be good for the honeybees. So flowers that bloom over a successive period of time where it's not all just one shot, um, not using systemic chemicals, not buying Home Depot or whatever plant stores are selling plants that have these neonicotinoids in them, you know, fruit is great. Any sort of vegetable, having a vegetable garden is great as all food for bees. Uh, remember, if you live inland, having a, a, a water source, whether it be a bird feeder or just a bucket of water or something like that, bees have to drink water as well. Thank you.